Now this is an Atari Jaguar, but if you've been reading the retro news recently, I'm sure you recognize it as the repurposed case for the Coleco Chameleon, which was a retro styled console intended to use with retro games and the like with the Coleco brand name. But here a few snags, the main ones being that the first prototype was a piece of cardboard. The second problem was at the New York Toy Fair, Someone worked out, well, lots of people worked out, but it was a SNES Mini shoved into a um, case, a Jaguar case, and you could see the ports on the back and where it was coming out, and it wasn't really a prototype at all. And then they released another picture, which happened to be a TV video capture card shoved into a clear case. And you could, you could even see the edge connector and the connectors down the front to reveal it. They you know, obviously weren't anticipating how on the ball the internet community were. The millions of internet users who <laughs> could work out what the hell was going on. But this isn't about the Coleco Chameleon, it's about the 64. Now the 64, you'll notice it hasn't got the Commodore brand name, is a new version, sort of, of the Commodore 64. It looks a lot like this, although it's cut down significantly, and it's been launched on a Indiegogo campaign on the 14th of April. And we're looking to get $150,000. Uh, when I last checked, they were about 20% funded. And it seems to be halfway between the ZX Spectrum recreated by Elite and the uh, Amiga, in that it's like a Commodore 64. It's got the capabilities of a 64. You can even plug cartridges into the back, apparently. It's got a keyboard. And, you know, it comes with pre-installed games and stuff. So... It looks interesting. It looks like it could be good. Uh, Darren Melbourne is behind the project and he created the C64 DTB, which is the, the joystick, which had actual Commodore components and a circuit board inside it rather than emulation. So that's good news. The latest specs claim that it will have uh, two SID chips for stereo sound. I'm not sure where they're going to source the SID chips from because they're getting quite expensive. And, you know, if. if if they're fakes, that could be a problem. If they're genuine, then the anticipated sale price for this machine is $150. So to pack all this kit in, that cheap price seems quite ambitious. And they're looking to launch in December this year, which is quite a short time frame. So it's very optimistic. But it could come to fruition. Now, I don't think this is going to go down the route of the Coleco Chameleon. The backers behind it seem like they know what they're doing. And although we've only got like a plastic prototype at the moment, it looks feasible. Here's the Indiegogo campaign video. And you may notice that there's a degree of secrecy behind the backers of this campaign. Not entirely sure why that is. We know that Darren Melbourne is involved, and a recent update on the campaign page tells us that Andreas Wallstrom is now on board as the publishing director. He's from the demo group Flash Inc. and has been in some retro bands, including the Sid 80s, and has been the webmaster of C64.com for over 10 years. The company behind the campaign are Retro Games Limited, not to be confused with Retro Computers Limited behind the Spectrum Vega. And a quick search on Company's House also reveals what appears to be Paul Andrews, founder of the gaming hub Retro Trader, Paul Gouge, who was behind Rockpool Games, and Christopher David Smith, who wrote the How to Design a Microcomputer ZX Spectrum book. Alongside the desktop machine, the campaign is also promoting the 64SX, a rather cool looking handheld version in a similar vein to the recently funded ZX Spectrum Vega Plus console. The SX is a nod back to the Commodore 64SX, a portable version of the Commodore 64. I say portable, the machine weighed a bloody ton. Of the two machines, I'm probably most interested in the handheld, mainly because it offers something which I can't get from my actual Commodore 64. Now, it's claimed that the machines will come pre-loaded with some classic games alongside some brand new ones. I presume we can then shove in other games via the USB socket. The company don't actually have the rights to the Commodore name, hence why it's simply called The 64, but they have licensed the ROMs and BIOS from the holders Cloanto Incorporated. As I mentioned, tech specs currently claim multiple SIDs, HDMI output, 512 megabyte writable cartridge support, an official joystick which is available through backing, and support for many emulator file formats. Now from the sounds of this, it sounds like real chips and hardware circuitry have been used over emulation, but we'll hold out and see. 
The campaign also mentions they have working prototypes ongoing, but there's no sign of them whatsoever at this stage. Hopefully this won't turn out to be another chameleon situation. $150 backing will get you the machine when it launches, or $170 will get you the handheld version. So if you fancy it, pop on over and judge for yourself. In terms of whether I'd get one, probably not. I mean, I've got the real thing. I can see why people might be drawn to it because you know, people like new shiny things to plug in straight into their HDMI sockets and the like. But when you've got the real thing, it, yeah, it doesn't really seem worth it to me. But I'm sure there's a big market for it. People who want to just get set up and go with some nostalgic Commodore 64 gaming. And the aesthetic of it is quite appealing as well. It looks a bit cut off because, because we're used to this design, but it looks good in its own right. So it'll be interesting to see if it comes to fruition. If it does, be interesting to have a go on one.